Hey, welcome back. We're going to be working on importing audio today and then working with that audio, setting us up for an exercise um, of working with animation that coincides or works with the audio that we are uh, importing. So before I even start with any After Effects business, let's talk about how to um, get that audio uh, prepared or found in our computers, making sure we are using the right kind. After Effects supports these audio types, um, which is almost any audio that you're going to come across. So AAC, MP3, AIF, WAV, those should all be file formats that maybe you are familiar with. I know everyone knows MP3. People aren't throwing around AAC much, and they never really throw around AIF unless you're in the industry. And hey, you guys are in this class. That means you must be in this industry to some point here. Um, and then PC users obviously know the WAV file. So your best sounding uncompressed audio in its rawest native form would be an AIF file, also known as AIFF, and everything else is compressed. So if you can find a way to make your audio an AIF file um, upon importing it or obtaining it, that's going to be your best file format. But this day and age, AAC, MP3, Wave, they're all pretty decent as far as the quality of, of con, um, compression compared to an AIF. AIF files are humongous, and the others are very transferable via email and things like that. So that is the file formats for audio that After Effects plays nice with. Okay, um, You might be looking at your iTunes. Oh man, look at all the kids bops in there. Am I a nice dad for putting up with kids bop or what? Uh, funny. Uh, okay, I found a song that I'm going to use for this um, exercise in my iTunes. And if I double click on it, I'm not even sure if you can hear it, um, but it's got a nice beat and the bass line comes in. It's perfect for doing some simple uh, animation. So this song is merely referenced here in iTunes as a file that lives on my computer somewhere. And that's going to be consistent through all of your computers. Somewhere on your computer is a file and whether you use iTunes or any other player it's just referencing the file so you need to figure out where exactly that file lives. And the easiest way to do it, in iTunes at least, is to right click on the song itself and say, hey, show me that song, where it lives in the finder. And so it opens up your finder and it locates it immediately. So right then and there is where I can find my song and if I'm gonna be using it in a project, um, I always copy it, so I just did a command C and then I will put it in a project folder which I will make and I'm going to call it uh, shape sounds paste boom so now my AAC file also known as an M4A is going to be residing in a folder uh, specifically for my project which should be very easy to find later. It'd be really difficult to look for... Oh shoot. Let's see. Was that a different window? Here it is. Okay, yep. Yeah, it was a different window. It'd be hard for me to go and find this through all of the different folders, subfolders and sub subfolders before I find it. That's why it's smartest for me to copy it and paste it into a project bin. And that's how you would find it in iTunes. Now, if you have a song or something, an audio track in iTunes that is not a compatible file, you can change in your preferences. Bloop, bloop. 
just under general when a CD is inserted import settings and you can change your encoder to AIF or WAV or MP3 if you want the best audio AIF is what you would ideally set it for but since I said that after effects plays nice with all of those files you know I still could use that AAC file but I can change this right now to AIFF encoder hit OK close out my preferences by hitting OK and if I were to go to control so where do they put it because they change menus all the time right click on it how about that right click and create AIFF version there it is so I could ultimately create a whole new version of that that is a different file format that would be more friendly for After Effects to work with if for some reason it wasn't one already so you can actually do conversions in iTunes which is pretty cool if you do a conversion if I say I want an AIFF version of that file it's done I still now need to say show and finder there it is it's crab bucket AIF and then I can copy and paste it into my project folder now just look at the size difference between these this is a AIF file which is uncompressed beautiful it's 44 megabytes the exact same song compressed as an AAC file is 3.9 so that's a significant size difference. You can understand why compression has been so key in the digital music uh, distribution world. So all right, I got my sound, now I can go jump back into After Effects. I'm going to import that. I love my shortcuts, just double clicking in the project window. Saves me so much time from having to go up to file, go to the import, etc. You should learn those shortcuts. Um, so now I gotta find it. I know that I made a folder recently, so here's my recent folders, content, shape sounds. I will use, I'll use the, the smaller file size one. So now I have my audio file here in After Effects. I should plan appropriately to see ex exactly what part of the song that I would like to use. So if I'm going to make my composition, then I'll do this shape sounds for the name, my size will be NTSC Dear One Wide Screen and 10 seconds. One zero 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 will translate to 10 seconds in, ten, in the world of time code. And uh, I don't know, background color. I'll leave it white. White's cool. Done. So there's a, a project, 10 seconds long, got nothing in it. We'll go back to my uh, project window here and double click on my audio. When I double click an audio file, it opens up the footage tab. And here you don't see anything because it's audio. And in order for you to hear it, you got to do uh, some special stuff. You can't just hit spacebar. You're not going to hear anything. You could, you don't even do a RAM preview because we're not in a composition. So the only thing that you can do to get that audio playing is do a period on your number pad which now I'm starting to on, a, on my MacBook Pro it's control period boom, boom, ba -doo, boom, boom, boom. so it gives me an audio preview of my track and that was control period on the MacBook Pro not sure if it's going to translate to a PC differently, um, but you figure it out. It's the, it's the period on the number pad if you have an extended keyboard. You just hit the period there. Don't hit the period on your new, on the, on the, uh, the primary part of your, your keyboard. But since most laptops now are con condensed and they share those keys, you got to be a little handy with the extra keystroke. 
So now I know that I only have 10 seconds of it. And fortunately for me, I'm using the beginning of this song for my animation anyways. But in the event that I needed a different part of this song, I knew that it was somewhere around like a minute 30, I'd move my playhead to a minute 30. This is not normally my type of music, but for some reason this song kind of catches uh, my interest. That aside, <laughs> I, don't know, I had to put that disclaimer in there. Whatever, back to work. Now, if I knew it needed to start right around here, there are two tiny little buttons hidden underneath the timeline that are set an in point and set an out point. And these buttons will trim your audio to just the part you need. So if I just put an in point there, now if I were to insert this audio clip into my, my composition, it'll start where my end point was, which was at 1 minute 30 seconds and 1 frame. To get the footage imported to the timeline is a button that resides to the right of those in and out buttons, and there are two of them. One of them is a ripple insert, and one of them is an overlay edit. You almost always want to use the overlay edit. Otherwise, you will cut any existing layers in half and push them over. You don't want to do that. You just want to overlay it to your project. At this point, there's nothing else in my composition, so it wouldn't really matter anyways. But it's still about habits and establishing good habits as we move forward in our, our workflow. So I don't want to start this thing at 1 minute 30 seconds in one frame. I actually want it to be at the beginning. So we'll go back and set my endpoint at the beginning. And then I'm going to use my overlay edit to plop it into my timeline. And then it jumps me back to my composition. And it now resides as an audio track in my composition, ready to rock. Now, audio is tricky in After Effects. After Effects is a motion graphics program. It's not an audio program. So it's not really that sweet. But there are a lot of times when we need to animate two different audio cues, especially in a case like this where I'm looking to do rhythmic things, okay? So um, don't expect this to be really friendly, but it's doable. And I'm just going to try to keep it as basic as possible for you guys. The, the real process in a professional environment of audio with our motion graphics would be done after um, our animation is complete and we would render out a movie and we would take it to a program that actually caters to uh, audio editing and uh, soundtrack building and whatnot, something like Logic or Soundtrack Pro or, or this guy named Phil who has a business who does that for money and you can just send it to him. Um, no longer your problem. But obviously you as an animator, you got to have some sense of rhythm and, and connection to things, maybe voiceovers or whatever. So um, I'm going to look at the inside of this timeline. I'm going to toggle this little uh, triangle. What are those? They have a they have a name. I forget what they're called. For a long time, I just called them triangles, and then I learned what they were called, and I haven't had to say it in a while. Now I forget. You kick it open. Kick it open. And you'll see that you have something called audio. Kick it open again. Here is a key frameable property called audio levels, currently set at zero decibels. Zero is normal volume, and it has a range from negative 48, which is absolutely dead silent, to 12, plus 12, which is like loud, cranking it. So if you just want standard normal volume, you would leave it at zero. If you need to do things like fades and whatnot, then you would start to keyframe this from, you know, maybe a negative 48 to zero. So you'd have a fade in. So it's not so abrupt. And I'll try to touch on some etiquette a little bit later. I won't do that right now. Now, if you open up your waveform, it gives you a visual representation of the audio. And I can see rhythm going on down there. 
how do I listen to this? It's the same thing as in the footage tab window. If I do a period, you can kind of listen to it and see the playhead move through those waveform elements and give you verification that, yep, at that moment there is sound. If I hit spacebar, which people love to hit spacebar, I have been animating and doing motion graphics for 99, that's so like 14, 15 years. I never use the spacebar because spacebar is not reliable as a playback element. So stop it. I talked earlier about establishing good habits, and that is a bad habit. The spacebar, not a good one for After Effects. Great for Final Cut and editors because spacebar is play and stop. But since we work with so much layering and, and animation and effects and stuff like that, After Effects must render stuff into its RAM in order for it to be uh, processed and played back at real time. So, you know, there are two ways to hear it. I showed you one with the period. The other thing would be to do a RAM preview. And it just will play it and show you anything happening visually uh, as well. The other thing to do would be to hold down your command key and drag it. So you can hear that as I scrub forward or backwards, it's playing that audio in the timeline. And that's a good way to get specific cues if you need them. So that is importing audio and viewing it in your timeline. And I'm going to wrap this movie up and we're going to jump into then animating to audio and using visual cues um, and having some fun stuff happen. All right. Thank you.